Good afternoon, my name is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History, and we're gonna begin episode two of the Clara Barton story. And Clara Barton is from North Oxford, Massachusetts, so it's quite a New England story. So we'll go to the next slide. And we're gonna begin here. This is a colorized photo, black and white photo, of uh, Antietam Creek. And it was probably taken uh, before the battle. You can see uh, Antietam Creek, and you can see the bridge over it. And we're gonna be talking about uh, Antietam, Maryland here in episode two. And that's a great uh, color picture of the uh, Antietam Creek and the bridge over it. We'll go to the next slide. And the whole countryside was turned into turmoil here. The uh, South was advancing north, and the uh, Union Army was ready to uh, stop their attack. So the Union and Rebel Armies, they clashed right here at Antietam. And we'll go to the next slide. And the heaviest fighting was at what they call the uh, cornfield, which opened up here. And you got all stalks of corn as tall as each of the soldiers and bullets flying everywhere. And it was quite uh, an incredible clash of two armies. We'll go to the next slide. Then it moved along to uh, Dunker Church, an open, oh wait, big open field here. Church assault, and there's the Union Army uh, in uh, ranks and uh, charging across an open field. I mean, it, it was just amazing the uh, uh, the devastation and uh, of these two armies clashing here at Antietam. We'll go to the next slide, and this is one of my better shots here. This is uh, around uh, Dunker Church, and that's the Rhode Island Light Artillery right there. That's a famous painting. And we'll go to the next slide. And then that, the fight passed through there, and you can see the, uh, some of the dead Confederates here, and there's a Dunker Church, and you can see the, uh, actually where the cannonball, the holes in the side of the building and everything else. It was uh, incredible. And this was actually a black and white photo that has also been uh, uh, colorized. And we'll go to the next picture. Now, it moves down to Antietam Creek. And this was the, uh, it's to be called the uh, Burnside Bridge. General Burnside uh, from Rhode Island was in charge here. And the uh, rebel army was on the other side of the, other side of the bridge, just waiting for them. And they were on the high ground. And this is a famous uh, bridge. That's a picture of it today uh, in history. So we'll move along to the next slide. And this is, this is amazing here. You can see the bridge down there, you can see the creek, and you can see that all across the hills there were lined with the rebel sharpshooters, and they were just picking off all the Union soldiers one at a time. Um, and of course, General Burnside made the decision that uh, he was gonna gather his forces, and the quickest way across the creek is right across that bridge. But the problem with that is, he would funnel the whole army right across that uh, bridge there, and they would easily, easily get uh, picked off by all these sharpshooters. We'll go to the next slide. And this here's a picture here. They're ordered to charge, and you can see all the Union soldiers, and you can see the bridge in there, and you can see up on uh, top there all the uh, flashes from all the guns, all the rifles and everything else like that, and it was, uh, an, an incredible, an incredible battle with, with so many casualties here at Antietam. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, I took a couple pictures here. Um, the Antietam town, and you can see on the left there, there's a church, and you can see how that was uh, part of the battle there. You can see the site of the church, and then on the right, that's what the town looked like. Uh, back in time there, and uh, with the dirt road, and uh, if you take a real look, you know, closer look there in the picture on the right, at that house uh, right in front of the uh, front of us there, you can see the hole in the side there where a cannonball probably went through, where the two armies clashed. And we'll go to the next slide. 
Now, Clara Barton knew of this attack, and what she was doing is gathering all these ambulances. And those ambulances, there they are. They're all gathering there, waiting for the battle to be over so they could uh, rush right to the field and uh, take the severely wounded in these wagons and uh, take them to, uh, to hospitals for medical care. So she organized all of this, and you can see what an incredible job she did. And she used a lot of her experiences she had in Bull Run to make this one a little bit better, but she didn't realize the, uh, the number of casualties that happened here at Antietam, so they were just uh, still totally overwhelmed. We'll go to the next picture. And here's a picture of a Union Field Hospital. There were so many casualties that all they had to do was just throw up some tents and poles and take the uh, wounded and put them in there to get them out of the sun. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, fields were just covered with these makeshift uh, uh, field hospitals. And uh, Claire Barton saw all of this and she said, I'm not... Uh, if, if the men can stand this and the doctors can stand this, so can I. <laughs> and she went right into the field to help. And we'll go to the next slide. And you can see, this is a picture on the, uh, on the right. You can see there were Confederate soldiers and Union soldiers just lying all across this uh, Antietam, the fields. So they had to gather up all the soldiers and uh, uh, take those that were critically injured and put them on the wagons and get them to hospitals and the others they could give first aid to. And over on the left, you can see this uh, soldier here. That's how they set up their uh, operating table. A couple of wooden uh, wooden kegs and a, and a door. You put somebody on there and uh, there's a doctor right there. And uh, that's what they had in, uh, for uh, medicine back in the day. And we'll go to the next slide. And some of these great pictures here. Now, the wounded soldiers, you had to do something with them all. So they had everyone try to gather up all these soldiers and try to move them into anything that they could, whether it's churches, whether that's buildings, whether that's private houses, whatever it was near. It just, they took it over, and it just became a, a massive uh, uh, tasks to get in, into all these hospitals so they could uh, treat everyone that was wounded. And we'll go to the next slide. And I took some pictures here. I could put these together of some of the Antietam Hospital. I mean, this was just was amazing. I mean, there's like uh, 22,000 casualties on the battlefield. And you can see up on the top there, uh, you can see there's a church in the town of Antietam and there's a private house private home. Uh, there was a stone house on the left that was used as the hospital. There was another large hospital there, the, the building here in the uh, center of the picture, and then barns, everything. I mean, these, th there were so many wounded that they would actually have to just stack them outside, and they couldn't even get into the barns. We'll go to the next slide. And I just had this great picture here. that. Uh, church is still here today and that was taken over as a uh, as a hospital and on the right they actually took a picture of what it looked like inside the church i mean you can see the uh, the church windows on the outside wall inside the church you can see there's a second deck on there and you can see they set up all the beds and just they just completely took over the building here and that happened with each and every one of those houses that were all over the field, barns and everything else. They had to gather all these people. And you can imagine the, uh, the chaos. We'll go to the next slide. Now, this is called the Poffenberger Farm, and that's a picture of it today. And I did some research here with Clara Barton and this was where she, she started off when she came down to uh, Antietam. And that became a, a, a major hospital. And she aided all these uh, Union soldiers right there. 
That's a great, uh, great photograph of it. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is a before and after, if you will. On the left side is the uh, Poffenberger Farm. Pretty much what it looked like uh, in 1862, uh, uh, 63. And there it is today on the right. And you can see it's, uh, they did a great uh, job in preserving this building for history. And uh, of course, the significance is amazing because Clara Barton, although she was never um, trained as a nurse, she had to learn how to do all these things um, in order to survive and in order to help everyone. So she was always watching doctors, watching some of the other nurses, seeing how they did things and, and always trying to change things, always trying to organize all the materials they needed, uh, whether, you know, it's food, water, whatever it is like that. She was a great organizer. We'll go to the next slide. And there's the barn. That's, that's what it looked like on, uh, on the left. And that was filled with soldiers. And on the right, if you go to Antietam, there's the barn today. You can see, you can see they had to do a, quite a job in uh, preserving that for history. And of course, a lot of documentaries and stories, they, they really don't go into detail about the aftermath of the, of the battle of Antietam. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, what they had to do, of course, all the wells, a lot of the houses, they all had wells, and, and that was a prime, <laughs> prime real estate, prime things to get, because you've got these huge armies, uh, the Union Army specifically, and you had, how do you, how do you get water? How do you get food? How do you, how do you feed all these soldiers? And especially the, the wounded in the hospital, thousands and thousands of them. And uh, there's the picture on the right of, uh, of a well. It's, it's been colorized, so it was actually taken during the uh, Antietam battle. And you can see they've got a cart there with, uh, with a horse. And what they were doing is filling up these uh, wooden kegs with uh, water. Of course, one by one, they had to send all the buckets down to the bottom of the well, hoist them up, pour them into the barrels, and rush them right to the battlefield. And there's an actual Union can uh, canteen. That's a picture there over on the left. And uh, that's a, you can see it's the same one that I have on my desk right here. Um, that was uh, given to, on my wife's side of the family. There it is right there. <laughs> and that's one of, one of my uh, prized possessions there. That's an actual Union canteen. And very important, when, when everyone's uh, injured on a battle, it's one of the things they want. They need the water, they need the water. And we'll go to the next slide. And what else they need? And she's, she's actually uh, taking notice of all these things that they're trying to do, setting up tents, uh, uh, portable stoves like that. And you can see there's a stove right there. Um, You've, you've got to feed all these people. You can't transport them. They're, they're too severely wounded, a lot of, a lot of them. Uh, you've got to give them something, something to eat. Uh, and she took notice of all of that, which stoves worked, which stoves were the easiest to transport to the battle. She was just doing all this. She was making all this in, in her mind. Everything that she was looking at, she said, we can do better, we can do better. And that's how Clara Barton really, uh, really got started. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, the others, this is called the Smith Barn Hospital. This was also in Antietam, Maryland. And that's a great, great picture of it there. It's actually taken. And you can see the surrounding area. I mean, goodness. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't even imagine that with all the uh, soldiers that were Shot in the arm, shot in the leg, shot in the head, wherever like that. Just strung out all over the battlefield as the battle progressed. And this barn was uh, another, they took it over for uh, medical, medical treatment. And we'll go to the next slide. And 
I was very lucky to find this one here. This is actually that someone made a, a sketch of this, the actual barn. And if you look out the, uh, the door of the barn there, you can see one of the uh, Civil War ambulances and they're taking the uh, wounded soldier out. Each, each one of those wagons could hold uh, two soldiers and they would bring them in the barn. Now in the barn you can see um, <laughs> underneath it on the left and the right, you, that's where the horses are. And in the me middle, all they did was just uh, lined up all the wounded and uh, put them on the, on the uh, wood floor. And then one by one, they would take them, where they, they would have a door down there, and they would have a, like a table set up, and the surgeons would operate on it. And in most cases, uh, it was removal of arms and removal of legs because of the ammunition and the uh, when it when a bullet would hit it would uh, just shatter the bone back in the Civil War there's not really not much you can do to uh, save the soldier and we'll go to the next line and I, I really like this shot it was taken actually today the uh, roulette barn Union Field Hospital in Antietam I mean you can almost imagine if, if you walk on the Antietam and you walk down here, you can al almost imagine what the, the chaos was around here. And that's one of many, many buildings. We'll go to the next slide. And this was called a stone, stone house. And I took a picture of that and I did some uh, research on that. Union Field Hospital. Clara Barton found out that Massachusetts, uh, 21st Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry, that's where they all put them in this small building. So she made the point to go down there and, and, and help them. They're from Massachusetts. Of course, that's where she was born and raised. And uh, she um, took care of them, you know, gave them food, gave them water, uh, changed dressings and all, all the wounds and everything. And that's uh, uh, the stone house uh, still there today. Another important part of uh, history. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, this is quite a story. She did a lot with the wounded in the barns and whatever like that, but it wasn't on, uh, exactly on the front lines. And she saw, she just was compelled to, to go into the front line where all the firing was and to help those that are immediately hit right away. And... Uh, she was out there pulling soldiers away, and, uh, and a, 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 a stray bullet came, and it hit the soldier was in her arms, and she was pulling him, and it hit him in the, hit him in the cheek. And on the left there, that's called a uh, mini ball. And it, and it was so hot. I guess it gets hot with all the, the gas and the powder and everything being shot from a, uh, a musket that it was lodged in his cheek and it was burning, burning his face. He screamed at her, do anything, do anything. And she looked around and all the doctors, of course, were handling all the other, I mean, there's just, you can't really call a doctor at that time. And he was in pain. And so she said, well, I've never done this before, but uh, hold on. And so on the, on the right there, she pulled out a Civil War pocket knife. And that's a picture of what they would have looked like. And she told them to hold on. And she used that knife. And she cut the bullet out of his cheek. And saved his life. <laughs> just amazing, amazing woman. And I have here on my desk, I just want to show you a couple of those bullets here. And the, the, you probably can't see this one. Uh, this one here is a uh, some of the original musket. That's what they have. It was just a uh, a musket ball. Okay, some of the some of the uh, weapons had these, but it was not very accurate. You, it had no spin to it, and it uh, you never know where it's going to go when you shoot it. So they had a uh, um, somebody from uh, France. <laughs> His last name was Minnie. <laughs> And he came up with this design right here, which I have in my hand, called a mini ball. And you can see it's a lot different. It's got uh, ridges in it, and it's conical shaped, and it's actually hollowed out. And I got this when I was down in uh, 
one of the Civil War battlefields. Um, this is what they use. It's, believe it or not, it's a 58 caliber bullet. <laughs> and believe me, when, when, once you got hit with this, um, you know, any bones or whatever were just completely crushed. And this is probably the type of the bullet, or perhaps from a Confederate infield rifle, that she dug out of the soldier's uh, cheek. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, Civil War medicine. So many soldiers, after they got shot, they died, not, not from the bullets, but the infections. And I, I wrote down some of the medical procedures here, and when I read these down, you are not going to believe what uh, modern medicine was at the time of the Civil War. These are some of the medical procedures. Number one, the doctor's coats, of course, they handled thousands of soldiers, are all stained in, in blood. They never changed their coats. Number two, they never washed their hands. They had no idea what was causing infection. <laughs> Number three, scalpels, saws, forceps, sponges were cleaned by dipping into water, a jug of, uh, or a barrel of water before the next operation, which was already contaminated. Number four, wounds were sewn, sewed up with undisinfected silk thread. Number five, needles were threaded <laughs> by moistening with saliva. Number six, ether or chloroform was used to put the patient to sleep. And number seven, if they, see on the battlefield, Clara Bart noticed that they ran out of ether and chloroform right away, right away. And she said, she's determined that that's not gonna happen again. Got to get those supplies, got to get more of those supplies. So what they had to do to compensate instead was number seven. They either gave the soldier, wounded soldier a shot of whiskey or they gave him a piece of leather to bite on until they went through the operation. And the operation, we're calling sawing off a leg or sawing off an arm. And all, all they do is they, uh, they give you a piece of leather to, leather to bite on. I can imagine this by thousands of folks, that uh, soldiers on the battlefield. And that's a picture of the, uh, some of the surgeons right there. That was taken uh, after the battle. And you go to the next slide. Now, Claire Barton made sure we had all these uh, wagons set up after first aid was given and those that uh, needed additional medical. All these wagons were set up ready to head out to the hospitals. And that's a, that's a terrific picture right there. So at least they're organized. You gotta remember, they never had, in all these battles before in the United States and wherever, they never thought of the idea of uh, taking soldiers, putting them into these ambulances and taking them away for uh, major, major operations. And so this was the first war that that's, uh, that that happened, certainly thanks to Clara Barton. We'll go to the next slide. And there's a picture of the ambulance shop. <laughs> we can imagine all these wagons, I mean, they have to be maintenance. You gotta fix the wheels, we have gotta fix the axles, you gotta fix everything else. So they're all in top shape in case there's another battle. And that's a great, uh, great, great picture there. And you can see the sign in the building, ambulance shop. And of course, that was far away from the battles, but uh, it still gives you an idea of the organization that uh, Clara set up. And we'll go to the next slide. And I, th this is amazing. It was a colorized photo of the ambulance Teamsters. You know, it's too bad we didn't have the pictures of all these soldiers there. And you can see the ambulances in the back there. And uh, they had to wait until all the bodies were brought to them. And you got to remember what kind of a jarring ride that is over the countryside, hitting rocks and <laughs> everything else. No, no springs on the wagons. I mean, it was just awful. Go to the next slide. 
And there's a great shot, shows them on the battlefield, loading them two at a time with each one of these wagons. Wounded soldiers. In this case, they, a lot of them at Antietam, they were evacuated to Alexandria, Virginia. We'll go to the next slide. And that's one of the hospitals. It was actually a hotel, the Mansion House Hotel. This is all colorized photo. Alexandria, Virginia. So the, the extremely wounded, that, uh, that's where they had to really hurry to get them in there. And we'll go to the next slide. And there's a picture uh, in, inside. You can see not only had beds against the windows, they had beds right down to the center of the aisle. Every space was taken. Go to the next slide. And there's a picture of the Man uh, Mansion House Hotel, Union Hospital. And I believe that's a uh, Clara Barton um, administering to the sick, which she did, bed to bed. I mean, they said she went hour, I mean, one day after another with no sleep at all. She just kept on doing her job. And we'll go to the next slide. And there's a picture of the uh, nurses and doctors in Antietam at the Union now. And the Union had 12,400 casualties. This is all in one day. And the Rebel Army had 10,300. So there's a total of 22,700 casualties. And to this day, Antietam is the bloodiest single day of combat in the United States history. Now, you've had a lot more, but, the, but a lot of the battles stretch out two, three, four days. This is all in one day, completely overwhelmed. And we'll go to the next slide. And there's a, uh, an Antietam. They had this nice monument uh, to Clara Barton for everything she did to aid everyone. And we'll go to the last slide. And there's the, uh, the plaque that she had on there. And on that monument, you see the Red Cross? Those were made from four bricks from her uh, fireplace at her house in uh, North Oxford, Massachusetts. That's amazing. And that's to her honor, this uh, symbolic Red Cross. So there's uh, episode two. And uh, it's amazing when you think what happened back then at the uh, one day at Antietam. So this is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. Have a good afternoon. Mm -hmm.